Bad news, YouTubes. Kimmy left me. But just for a little while. And while I was solo on the boat, I decided to do some major projects I've been putting off because we'd been sailing around. So I took the entire boom off of the boat, put it in a fisherman's boat, and he gave me a ride over to a marina where they had an aluminum welder. And the reason I did this is because the sheaves were in the wrong spot. They were in the spot to reef the old main, and I haven't had a chance to, to move them to reef the new main. Okay, as I'm editing this, I realize that I might not make sense to some of you, so I've made a very professional visual aid to help me explain. This is the old sail, it's more of a triangle shape, and the new sail has a lot more roach in it. If you take an, an exact triangle, everything that's outside of this triangle is called the roach. If you have a roachy sail, it means just that this place is fatter. And because this sail is more roachy, it almost goes straight up from the back of the mast. So as you go up in the reefing lines, these sheaves need to be spaced to the angle of the sail and how much roach it has. So the old sheaves would not work with the new ones. I had to, to change the spot that these were located. And these aren't just screwed into the boom and there you go. I mean, he had to weld on backing plates and it was a, it was a big deal. But as always, when I got back to the boat, I realized that the job wasn't done and I needed to make a little bit of alteration myself. Then I put her all back together and well, stay tuned to find out. All right, I made it to Hako. I haven't been solo on the boat for a while and it was really refreshing to take a six or seven hour sail by myself. This will be the last time though because I came here to pick up my crew for the next week. I'm gonna teach him everything that he needs to know to survive on a sailboat because it's his dream to buy one as well. Please welcome my patron, Steven. I'm so tired. Yeah, I finally fell asleep like on the last flight in. I hate to tell you this, but now we have to swim back to the boat because my dinghy's broken. Yes, we're swimming. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Good to see you, man. We're gonna have fun. Nice shirt, buddy. I love it. Hey, gotta represent. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, cool. Get ready for some adventures. Hey, we're excited. Dude. Yeah, tell me. What the f happened last night? <laughs> hey, so we show up, James and I are waiting for this water taxi forever and just chilling and then we come back and James like, hey, I'm gonna go out and get the dinghy. You know, I'm just gonna wait it out. And so he comes back and has the dinghy all ready for me. And then we start wading out of the water. We go over a few surfs and then like what, on the fourth swell, we got hit. Here I am with like the most important backpack over my head under the water <laughs> as the waves are coming down. Yeah, all my clothes, everything's soaked. And then the dinghy, I'm pretty sure. It's, yeah, it's completely full of sand. It's it's not in good shape. All in all, the, the dinghy wasn't broken any really more than it was broken before, and the motor didn't run right anyway. So I, I'm, I'm feeling like we're winners in this situation. Yeah, I think we won on it. I don't know, we must have just hit the wave a little bit off, and the thing filled with water, turtled my sh Every f***ing where. I think we got most of the food back. We got most of the food Cause back. Because it, it floated, but we lost the eggs and we lost the meat, so we have no protein. We gotta catch a fish. <laughs> We're gonna have to catch some fish. And today. we have no car, since my dinghy is, again, messed up. Swamped and underwater. <laughs> so this table's full of crap that he brought. So this is my reefing lines. These are gonna be all brand new. Luke, the guy that redid all my rigging, he started a company called Kraken. Look what he sent me, man. This is gonna be my new dead eyes. These are badass, 316, like stupid strong. This is for my anchor drogue. This is way overkill. I bought the wrong size, actually. But I tell you what, it's not gonna break. I talked to Brian Toss. He wrote the, rig the Rigger's Apprentice. We just got in touch with each other because I put that rigging video out. And he said I should switch to heavy, heavy duty thimbles instead of the split ones that I have, the, the heavy duty, these are ultra heavy duty. So I'm gonna go around and change all these as I'm as I'm redoing all the rig. New water activated lights. So the way these work is you put them on your harness 
and they just kind of stay on your harness. That way, if you fall in the water, if you were to get washed overboard or something, when these when these fall in, they start blinking. And this is supposed to blink for 300 hours. That is key to being seen. These things were 20 bucks a piece and they could save your life. This is 516's line. We're gonna rerun all of the old rigging line for my dagger boards and my furler. Got a new dive knife for uh, for the girl. I got some cool stuff for her when she gets back. She's gonna, it's gonna be like Christmas for her. This is her new mask. This is a Rife Mantis mask and with a GoPro mount on it. And one of our patrons actually sent us a Hero 5 Black Pro. I, I mean, dude, Tom, you're the man. I. Thank you so much. And then we got more sushi. We've been waiting for these for a while. So it's been, we've been selling these shirts for at least two months and I haven't even seen them yet. And they look super cool. We got three Zingaro shirts. I'm super happy about that. A planer so I can finish the work on the, on the teak. That's gonna be nice. That went underwater, but it still works. I just checked it. We're good. So we're gonna get started on some of this running, running rigging before we go today. And we're gonna get out of here and. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix the dinghy motor underway while we're going towards Capos. What we need to do now is feed a line through here, all the way through the boom, and then use that to pull. This will be the third reef. I'd like the third reef on this side and the first reef on this side, just because my main halyard is on this side, and it's a lot easier to reef one reef because you have both the halyard and the reefing line, so you can do it yourself. So if I'm sleeping, Kimmy can do it. <laughs> See where I got that? Yeah. Yep. comes up through here, goes through the sail, goes through the hole in the sail, and then comes down and ties to here. So it, it's actually, when I pull this down with a, with a winch, this is what's keeping the sail down. And you can make a nice shape for the sail and still sail, but just with half of a main instead of a full thing. That's called reefing your sail. It's just much safer this way. I hope your wife appreciates this. She's going to, James. You're gonna keep me alive. Hopefully. Uh, I got a pretty good track record so far. 98% chance. I'm like, I'm like 32 for 33. <laughs> oh, so that's a good percentage, man. I think. We're gonna, we're gonna practice not tying, but for now, that's a bullin'. Okay, you sailing virgin. Dude, sailing virgin right here. Raise the main! Okay, we just wanna raise it until you see the kringle for the, look, see that? That's, yeah. that's the third reef, okay? Okay. We finally have the line going all the way through the boom. What it's doing is it's tied up back there and it's going over the sail through the third reef. And then it comes through the boom and it's all coming out this direction. So we need to pull it through. So ultimately it'll go through the boom. It will come out here. This is also the third reef. So it comes in, goes through here, and then it goes down through these sheaves. That, that way, this is how I route it to the cockpit. So ultimately, it'll go through here, around this, and then all the way back for the cockpit. So when I pull it from back there, then I can, I can do this all from the cockpit. I don't have to come up to the boom in, in a seaway where I could fall over. And then we'll raise the main completely, measure off how much we want to leave extra, cut it with a hot knife, and then do this all again on the other side for, this, for the second reef. This will make it so it doesn't fray later. But if we were gonna tie a stopper knot in the end of this, if you wanted to, so it doesn't pull out this way, you can either tie a figure eight knot, which is over, and then instead of coming through like you would a regular knot, you just flip it one more time and then come through. And that makes a figure eight. See the eight there? That's just a thicker knot. So it can't, you can't pull it through this. The point of it is, just in case you don't pull it through and it goes all the way out. And sometimes it'll just go up the mass and all the way down and just really mess your day up. An even better knot, and one, one that I like to use, is this type knot. That's a really good knot and it's really big and it's never gonna get pulled through anything. And that knot is tied like this. Take your thumb, get a lot of line. Take your thumb, put it over it. You go over your thumb once, twice, three times and then back through where your thumb is. So pull your big ass thumb through and then you kind of got to tighten this one from both sides a little. And now it's all pretty 
and you got a pretty stop or not. Cool. The way that I route this stuff, I like it through here and then hanging on. In order of importance, I got my further line, my reefing line, my topping lift, and my um, my halyard for the jib is here. I not, hardly ever use it, so it's kind of just hanging out. Cool. We swapped out this line for the daggers. This is all new line. Coming right here. The reefing lines, both sides, color coordinated, all brand new. They're going up to the third reef and the second reef. It looks good. And it looks great. I really like the blue and, and, uh, and red. It looks super cool. Check this out. See the red and the blue going up? Yeah, it matches the sails perfect. And, and conveniently, the sun is setting behind us. <laughs> That's how we do it in Costa Rica. I love dolphins. They're very wow. good luck. I consider them good luck anyway. So incredible. So beautiful, man. This is like dozens of YouTube vlogs <laughs> packed into one. <laughs> like really happening. It's so surreal. This is only day one, my friend. Day one on Zingaro. All right, it's time to test the reefing lines we installed. I'm glad we did because uh, the autopilot's having a hard time keeping up. So this is where we're going. We started here at Capos and we're going down to Bahia Drake. And right now we're doing seven, we're doing eight knots, eight and a half knots. So we're gonna, you hear that sound? That's my autopilot trying to keep up with the boat doing so, it's not doing too well. So we're gonna, we're gonna reef main twice and that'll take care of that. It'll be a lot easier on the boat. Okay buddy, get it. We are in Bahia Drake, which is actually Bahia Drake in English and it's named after Sir Francis Drake that was a pirate, I guess, for the Queen. Yeah, for sure. And he uh, he ended up like pirating a ship and then bringing it here to Isla Caño. You can't see the island but it's out there. Oh yeah, you can. It looks like it's really far, but it's right there. So we just got back from spear fishing. Oh yeah, it was great. Steven caught his first. Well, caught. He speared, and we all saw it. But the but the spear gun broke, and uh, it didn't let go on the slip tip. So the thing went through the fish, went right back out, and the fish swam away to die, oh, which man. sucks. Yes. So we got two other pompano, and one is going to be honorably his pompano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Thank but you. Those yeah, are yeah. pretty good fish. They have really really fine skin. So they're pretty hard to uh, fillet with a with a big knife. I don't know. So awesome. And then we got some trigger, which these things have really tough skin. You can make shoes out of these, which I like. I really like this fish. It's like one of my favorite fish. And finally, it took me like two hours, but I finally got. This is an amberjack. <laughs> Should probably take the knife out of his ass. <laughs> and they are beautiful underwater. You see this blue specks? They're really banded like metallic blue right here when they're alive. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful fish. And this is this is a really nice fish. So right now we just had an amazing time here in Isla del Caño. We're heading back to shore to Drake Bay and having an amazing time, dude. <laughs> it's been great. We're saying goodbye to this amazing island. Yeah.
Dude, it's been a great week. Yeah, we're, we're actually sending, sending him off today. Yeah. In a few hours. In a few hours, I'll be gone. It's been epic. Dude, it's, it, been, it's it, been a good time. It's been a good time. Beautiful day today in Costa Rica. You couldn't ask for a better day. It's a little breeze. So this is a goodbye meal in um, Bahia Draque. Bahia Draque. And this is a like, completely Costa Rican dish. It's just um, papas and pollo, a little bit of beans, and a little bit of rice, and a little bit of salad. That's what you get here. It's pretty bland. It's not like, like Mexico had more of a picante kind of, everything had salsa. They don't do it here. Everything is a little bit more bland, but it's very like, good. Yeah, like salt with salt. Yeah, salt is about the only thing. So he's gonna take a boat to another town. That's an hour and a half on a boat. And then from the town, you have to take another bus to another town, which is gonna be like an hour. And then from that, it's gonna be a four hour bus ride to San Jose. <laughs> then you gotta sleep in a hostel, get up in the morning, take a taxi to the airport, and take like a, what, seven hour flight? Oh, it's something ridiculous. Two stops. <laughs> You're gonna be, it's like two days to get home, dude. Oh, I'm gonna be home at midnight tomorrow. Oh my God, <laughs> two stops. And that's dude. if there's no delays. Anyway, we got coconut bowls for his, all of his kids. Or actually, three of them. And then I'm gonna mail him a fourth one, because one, you have too many children. <laughs> and two, we couldn't find enough big coconuts. Uh, <laughs> we were just stuck on the pipa. Yeah. Uh, those are so good, though. Thanks, buddy. Had a good time with you, man. Had a great time with you, too.